is the Rocket Team? You wrote the book, The Rocket Team? Yeah, I co-authored it with a colleague yep. of mine who's no longer with us. And, and who is on the Rocket Team? Tell us a little bit about the Germans and the... Well, the Rocket Team, so I'll tell you how it got started. Yeah. You know, I think it's, uh, the book got started in England at the Garrett Club with a friend of mine who was a fighter pilot from the Royal Air Force during World War II uh, and senior editor at a company called Heinemann's, a very prestigious British publisher. And he was asking me about my work with Werner von Braun and the rocket team in Huntsville, Alabama. I started working with them in the middle 50s at the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. That was the agency that put up the first American satellite, Explorer 1. Most people think it was a NASA. I don't know, NASA was, we weren't part of NASA then. We didn't join NASA until 1960. And uh, I stayed on, work all through Marshall Center and on and on. Uh, and he asked me more about the, uh, the team, and, and he said, would you be interested in writing a book on the team? And we thought about it, but not right at that moment. Well, I said, yeah, I guess we've got an idea. But he said, oh, I don't want you to focus just on the team in the United States. We want to focus on the team, what it what did in Germany, its origins, and put up through the development of the V2. And then there's a, for our readers in England, there's a whole series of events uh, where the English are trying to figure out what they, well, they heard rumors of German wonder weapons, unknown weapons, test weapons being tested. They set up the intelligence committees uh, looking into the weapons, and there's a whole story. And I said, if you want to do the book, we would like to cover that also. And uh, so it, the book expanded, as all books do. So the book starts out covering the genesis of the German rocket team back in the 1920s, really, and 30s. Uh, it culminated with the development of the V-2 rocket by Werner von Braun and his team at Peenemunde. Then we switch to uh, what happened towards the end of the war. Russians were coming in from the east, closing in on Peenemunde. The allies, the British and Americans and the, the Free French were coming in uh, from the west. And that team was about uh, uh, squeeze. So the story has always been, they told me that Von Brown got his top lieutenants together and said, what are we going to do? They, they opted, they said to themselves, well, we're terrified of the Russians, but we don't want to surrender to the Russians. And we don't really like the French, so we don't want to surrender to them. And the French forces were there, the three French forces. And the British can't afford us, so that leaves the Americans. <laughs> so anyway, they set, uh, headed their way south. They loaded up uh, uh, trucks, trains, and barges uh, using the river systems in Germany to get material out of Finemunde and down into southern Germany. They knew that the most likely way to be captured would be in Bavaria because they knew the American army was coming up through um, uh, Italy and had less defenses. But they, had, they hadn't breached the, the West Wall yet, the Siegfried Line yet, and the Russians were still quite away. So they settled anyway in southern Bavaria, very close to the Austrian uh, frontier. And uh, uh, they took their, uh, uh, their, their documentation. That was one thing they really worried about. And they brought truckloads of truckloads of documentation and hid it in a mine, an abandoned mine, and then dynamited the, uh, the entrance. And uh, so it wouldn't cause any particular suspicion, just a caved in mine. And, but they remember where it was for the appropriate time. And so uh, one day, uh, they knew the Americans were in the area. They had radios and they could pick up signals and so forth. So they sent Von Brown's, but there was about it was a man named Dornberg, the, ch the chief general, the general in charge of the Payne Monday Group. And some of his staff members, and Von Brown and some of his key people, were holed up in a ski lodge. And uh, they knew the Americans were coming, so they sent the only man that spoke some decent English uh, was uh, 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 Magnus Von Brown, uh, Von Brown's younger brother. The ch children at all, that was a wealthy family, it was a noble family, and they. They all had their, their uh, nurses, and they, uh, Brown's nurse uh, was French, so his sort of second liners was French, and Magnus had an English-speaking nurse. So anyway, well, anyway, he was sent. His English was okay. Uh, and he was sent on bicycle. And uh, he uh, came upon a, an advanced squad uh, of American 
uh, uh, troops that were moving into that area, and of course they made him put his hands up immediately. They were suspicious, the Americans were suspicious. If anybody with was sabotage going on and people that were you know, killing themselves and had bombs, I mean, all kinds of things. And so, um, anyway, they did make the uh, contact. And it, it so uh, happened that the, that the, my name is Schmeichel, was a corporal who had been brought up in a German, he was a, a second generation German, he spoke some German. So between the two of them, uh, he reluctantly believed that this man here was a, the brother of Werner von Braun. The intelligence knew about him. And so they took him uh, uh, back to the lines and interrogated him, and they, then they believed him, more or less believed him. And they sent him back and said, okay, you can bring your, uh, uh, your a small group, about four or five of you, on the next day, and uh, we'll give you a white flag to let you through our lines. And they took them, that advance group down to a place called Reuter in, in northern Austria, just south of the German border. And there they interrogated him by a lieutenant named Charles Stewart, who became a good friend of mine later. And he was with, uh, with the Army Intelligence, and the Army was looking. They had big staffs of people in Europe, you know, waiting just behind the lines, because they, they were all kinds of German rocket secrets, submarine secrets, airplanes, they had jet airplanes and so forth. Uh, so they were hungry for information. And so that they had their, their uh, uh, initial meetings, and uh, slowly the team uh, was brought together uh, and put into a, 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 a camps in, in, in southern in, in Bavaria. And eventually, uh, key members of those teams uh, were given uh, uh, consulting contracts. They were considered prisoners of peace. They, were, they weren't military people. And so they, were, uh, they volunteered uh, to uh, come to the United States. And they were sent to the United States. It's a long story, but I'll say they ended up in Fort Bliss, Texas.